Hey everyone, and welcome to the Balanced Bodies Blueprint. I am your host, Vinny Russo. And I am your co-host, Dr. Aaron Stansfield. And we're shifting gears from all the conventional fitness narrative you hear on most fitness podcasts, as our main emphasis lies in preventative healthcare, adopting a holistic approach to nutrition, and challenging the traditional views on various fitness topics. Our mission with this podcast is to provide you with the information you need to achieve optimal health. And on today's episode, I'm going to be doing a Q&A. Uh, I'm going to be doing this as a solo episode. Dr. Aaron has been very, very busy at work, um, and we can't interfere with uh, with that as she is making uh, people healthy. So we do not want to interfere with that. Um, so I'm going to do this as a solo episode. She'll be back on next week as we got a pretty cool episode lined up for you. Uh, but it's going to be a Q&A. I asked people to provide questions. Only five questions came in. So these are the only five questions I'm going to be going over. Uh, actually, six came in, but it was very similar to the first question we're going to go over. So five questions um, actually came in that we're going to be discussing. Before we dive into that, I do want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Legion Athletics. Their supplements are backed by science. And the cool thing about them is if you try their products and you do not like them, they give you a 100% money back guarantee. So you could try their protein powder. Let's say you didn't like the taste. You could reach out to them and say, hey, this for me, it wasn't for me. And they will give you your money back, which can allow you to try a different flavor. Um, so Legion Athletics. All right. So let's go ahead and let's dive into this episode. Uh, five questions we're going over. Very relevant questions. Uh, sounded like Donald Trump there. Five questions. Very relevant questions. Beautiful questions that came in. Um, um, so here we go. All right. Number one is how much cardio should I be doing to lose fat? And I feel like this is a very common question that we get. A lot of people put a ton of emphasis emphasis on, on cardio. And to me, if you know me, if you have worked with me, I'm not a huge fan of doing cardio to begin with. I feel like it is, it's a tool. It's not a necessity. Um, so when someone comes to me and says, Hey, how much cardio should I be, do, should I be doing to lose fat? I'm like, there really is no set number. Like there's no set number of sessions. There's no set number of time. It's, I mean, I'm going to be honest, like you don't even need to do cardio to lose body fat. Like I said, it's a tool. It's a tool to help you get into that deficit that you need to be in order to lose body fat. Um, that's the most simplistic way to put it. It's not a necessity. I have had people lose a ton of body fat without doing cardio. Um, by cardio, I mean like intentional cardio. I obviously keep daily movement up with like step count, power walks and things of that nature. But when it comes to cardio in general, you don't have to do it to lose body fat. You got to really focus on your diet. Does cardio make it more efficient? Yeah, of course it does because it's more movement. It's expending calories. So like I said, it's a tool. It's just not a necessity. But the goal with cardio, no matter how much you're trying to do or what you feel like you should be doing, it should always be to do the minimum effective dose. And this is literally like how little can you get away with while still seeing progress? And that's the goal with cardio. You want to you want to acclimate to a very low level. So when your body gets used to that and it gets conditioned to that very low level, you can add from there. If you're already starting out with a ton of cardio and your body's used to that, the only way to progress from there, because your body gets conditioned to that, the only way to pro progress from there is to add more. And I'm going to be honest, being a busy person, I, I ain't got time for that shit, right? Like I don't want to do that. I want to be acclimated to a very low uh, number per, per week and a very low time per session. Um, so the minimum effective dose, what, how little can you do and still get away with seeing progress? And that is going to be the key with cardio. So is there a set number? No, there is not. If you've been doing a ton of cardio, I would try to scale back and get your body used to a lower amount. Um, and then use your diet to really focus on the fat loss, not so much uh, movement in total. Uh, by movement, I mean like physical exercise, like working out. A lot of people like they they look at their Apple Watch and they're like, "How many calories did I burn that session?" It's inaccurate, and that shouldn't be the thought process going into weight training. So don't see like weight training cardio being the only tools you have to lose body fat. The main tool is going to be your diet. So focus on that, and you will be pretty damn happy with the results. Let's go on to number two. Number two is as a woman, I do not want jacked arms. But it seems like every time I stay consistent with my workouts, my arms get huge. Is there a way around this? <laughs> wow. Uh, firstly, I would say that this is probably the best problem to have ever. I, any guy that I know 
who trains would actually love to have this problem. But the issue is, I see this as like, as a scapegoat. I see it as like a way to avoid training because as a woman, you don't have the hormones running through your body to cause this immense growth and, and to, to even cause it through just consistent training. I'm going to be honest um, with just the way that this came in. I'm going to say that you probably don't even really know how to entrain to the, to, to really cause enough stimulus to get growth. Right. Cause not many people do a bunch of guys. And I'm not saying just cause it's a woman. I'm saying like guys don't know how to train either. That's why you see a lot of people in the gym that just look the same every year, year in and year out. They just look the same. There's no growth, but you see them in there all the time. It's because there's not enough, there's not enough stimulus going on there to cause the growth. So in, in terms of what you're seeing, let's say this is true where your arms are getting more jacked. Well, maybe you're focusing too much on isolation exercises for the arms, or maybe which is a more realistic approach is that you're consuming too many calories, right? You're consuming more calories than you're burning, which is leading to a little bit of fat gain and a, maybe even a little bit of muscle gain. So my advice to you is to consider shifting your workouts to focus more on like compound movements than engage, you know, multiple muscle groups, um, which, you know, it, it'll still get your arms to a position of where like you look like you work out, but they're not, there's not so much focus on it to where it's like, well, they're, we're going to isolate them to grow. And you also got to understand too, like if your arms are getting a little bit on the bulky side, I'm going to say that has to do something with your diet because in, in order to achieve that toned look, the toned look is to have muscle mass, but you lose body fat over it, right? So if you want toned arms, you have to have some muscle on your arms, which is coming through this resistance training, but you also have to lose the body fat. Right. When you lose body fat, it'll show the muscle, therefore giving you that tone look. So just keep that in mind. Achieving a tone look is more about lowering the body fat percentage and not necessarily about trying to avoid muscle growth because you don't want to be bulky. All right. So if this is true, where you have this problem that every guy, even myself, wish they had, then what I would say is don't focus on so much isolation, focus more on compound movements and uh, really focus on your diet because if you're eating more calories, you might be adding a little bit of body fat, making you look a little bit more bulky. And it's true. When you do work out, you do get a little bit more hungry. So you might not you might not even be realizing that you're eating more calories. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, number three, my trainer gave me a diet plan and he has me eating six times per day. This seems like a lot. Is this right? It also has food in it that I've never tried, like fermented sauerkraut and kefir and foods I don't like, like salmon. What should I do? All right. Um, well, this comes at a perfect time because I am creating a ton of things for personal trainers to be able to provide more effective diet plans for their clients. Personal trainers have a ton of fitness clients. They just give out generic diet plans and they're not giving that client the most value because they're under, they're, they're basically, they're not giving out the right diet plans. Right. So when you look at overall physical fitness, if you're if you're reaching out to go see a personal trainer and you're hiring them to get in better shape, that shape is really going to happen with dieting. And when you don't have a right diet plan for you, it makes it that much harder to do. So the first thing I would say is what credentials does your trainer even have to provide you with nutrition protocols? Because in, in able for them to provide nutrition protocols, it requires specific training. It requires specific credentials and not all of these personal trainers are equipped to provide this. Some might have like a three hour course they took, or maybe a, a six week course that gives them a certification, but half of those certifications are half-assed. <laughs> so I would just say that in general, most personal trainers are not equipped to give out nutritional protocols that are going to be very specific for you. So it really sounds like a, normal cookie cutter diet plan that most trainers are going to hand out, which like I just said, that's, that's honestly doing you a disservice. Um, now as for, you know, your specific questions, eating six times per day isn't inherently wrong, but it's only effective if it's going to actually fit your lifestyle, your schedule, and your personal preferences. Most people really can't adhere to eating, you know, two to three hours because they have work, they have family and they, I mean, just they, they have life, right? So the plan needs to be created with your preferences in mind for what you actually prefer and can handle. 
Is it three meals and one snack? Is it four big meals spread out throughout the day? Is it two big meals and three like little snack like meals? See, because when you have a plan that's tailored to your preferences, it's going to help you adhere. And when you adhere to a plan and you stay consistent, it will give you more efficient results. Now, as for the foods that you said, um, what was it? You never tried or that you don't like uh, the, the kefir, right? The fermented sauerkraut and the salmon. Um, I mean, honestly, I don't even think you should be working with this person or, or listening to them giving you nutrition advice if that's the case. Because you shouldn't be forced to eat anything that you dislike or that makes you uncomfortable. A good nutrition plan should cater to your tastes and it should be designed around foods that you enjoy because it's going to drive consistency. Consistency yields results, right? So always prioritize your adherence and the personalization of a diet over these rigid or very prescriptive plans. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question. If you need help, um, just reach back out to me and uh, we could talk about uh, using me to help you with your nutrition. All right, two more questions. Number four is, uh, as a 45-year-old man who was in shape most of my life, I feel like I got after I got married, my body fights against me. My wife said it's because I'm older now. Is this true? No. Uh, you got married and your priorities changed. That's what happened. So you went from like prioritizing vanity to prioritizing family. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Honestly, that's sort of how I feel like it should go. Um, but you have to own that you actually let yourself go and don't use age as the scapegoat to just be like, yeah, I mean, this is kind of what happens. Now, yes, certain biological changes you know, occur as we age, but significant me metabolic slowdown, it doesn't really start that early in life. It, it starts a little bit later around like in between like 60 and 70 years old. That's when you'll start seeing your metab metabolism actually start slowing down. Um, so you being at 45, I mean, you're not even near there. So the reality is, is that lifestyle changes, such as getting married, focusing more on family and less on fitness is what caused your, your, your issue. So when your focus shifts away from maintaining your shape to other responsibilities, then your shape will actually take the back seat. But there is good news with this. And the good news is that your metabolism is not slowed down because of your age, right? And getting back in shape is possible at any age. I've put videos out there where I'm celebrating people's um, transformations. And my most recent one was someone who started in their 70s when their metabolism was actually slowing down. So you could definitely see or get yourself back to that shape that you that you enjoyed as long as you prioritize it again. It doesn't mean that your family has to take the back seat. It just means that you have to put more of an effort into the way you look, set yourself goals, and have a right game plan in order to, to achieve those goals. You have to prioritize it. You can't just wing it, right? So my advice is revisit your nutrition, increase your overall daily movement. You know, that doesn't mean cardio and working out. It means moving around. A body in motion stays in motion. And I do feel like if you're really focused on body composition, then it should be a priority to reintroduce a consistent exercise routine. Weight training is, is key here with all body composition changes because we want to maintain muscle mass, right? If, if you can build it, great. If you can maintain it, great. We don't want to lose it because losing muscle mass can then lower your total um, metabolic rate because muscle is very metabolic tissue. So the more you have, faster your metabolism is for, for lack of a better term. So hopefully that helps. And we're going to head into this last question. What is your Mount Rushmore of supplements for fat loss? Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really going to give an answer here because uh, I, just, I just feel like you're already in the wrong mindset and you're asking the wrong question. Relying on supplements to do the hard work for you is, is a perspective that's only going to set you up for failure. Right. So fat loss supplements are going to be marketed as like this quick fix, but they cannot replace the fundamentals of fat loss, which include a calorie deficit, which is achieved through proper nutrition and increased daily movement. Those two alone will help you lose body fat. So instead of looking for an easy way out and fall victim to these, uh, these fat burning scams, you need to focus on your diet. You need to move more often throughout the day. 
you need to collect data, right? This is really important. Collect data like your biometrics, your calories, your macros, your steps, your biofeedback, and then allow yourself some time to actually change with consistent effort. Change takes time. Change takes consistency. So allow yourself some time to actually see the changes. It's not going to happen overnight, especially if you've been out of the game for a while. Not going to happen overnight. Um, but the point is, is that there is no magical supplement. Like there's no magical supplement at GNC that you could go buy and just replace the effort you need to put forward in order to see the results that you want to see. So the lessons, like you got to think of it as like putting yourself through um, this bit of a struggle, right? The lessons you learn, the discipline you develop, the character you build by putting in that hard work, those are all things that are going to stay with you for the rest of your life. So building a strong foundation of healthy habits and discipline is far more effective and far more lasting than relying on supplements to help you burn some body fat. So yeah, I'm not going to give a Mount Rushmore. Hopefully that information, you know, sparks a little fire in you to, to go ahead and get after and focus on the things that really matter, which is going to be your diet and your overall movement throughout the day. You don't want to stay seated. You want to move as often as you possibly can. It might not be as much as your neighbor, but you want to focus on where you, what, what you currently do on, on like an average and just try to do a little bit more from there. And you will start to see results in terms of fat loss. So that's all I got for you today. Uh, like I said, next week, Dr. Aaron will be back on. Um, she will bring all of the, uh, all the research and the data um, into our next conversation. So I will see you all then. So on behalf of Balanced Bodies, we just want to say thank you for joining us on this episode of the Balanced Bodies Blueprint. We are committed to bringing valuable content. And if you enjoyed today's episode, we'd greatly appreciate it if you can take a moment and like it and leave a five-star review. On Apple, just go to the show, scroll down to the bottom and rate it there. If you're on Spotify, go to the show's page, click the three dots, and you can rate it there as well. And if you believe in the power of knowledge, share this episode on your social media to try and get the information out there to as many people as possible. And as you navigate your own path towards better health, remember that Balanced Bodies is forever in your corner. See you all next week. The podcast content may include discussions of medical topics and health-related information. However, the information provided should not be considered exhaustive or complete, and it should not be relied upon as a substitute for professional medical advice or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare providers with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment. Thank you.